What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at a friend of mine's Lexus GX470. This is a super clean truck that he bought a little over a year ago, and he's done a bunch of interesting mods to it in the meantime. So let's talk to him and let's see what he's done to it. What's going on, Carter? How we doing? So this is my GX470. It's a 2008. Um, it has about 185,000 miles on it right now. Uh, like Pat said, I've had it for about a year. Um, when I bought it, it had about 175,000 miles on it. Um, you know, if you're interested in buying one of these trucks, um, I would say a big thing is to, to look at the service history for these. Um, you know, make sure it has a good service record. You know, everything's been documented well. Um, one thing I will say is if you are looking at this vehicle, what you can do is you can put the VIN number in on Lexus.com and it should give you all of the service history if it's done at a shop or something like that. So, you know, if you're looking, um, a, a good form to join would be GX Off-Road. There's a whole bunch of different forms um, and they'll go through more in detail as far as what to look for and stuff like that. Um, and isn't there some issue on the frames with these, they rust out? Yeah, so a lot of Toyotas are known for that. Um, this one specifically, um, the front cross member that goes underneath the radiator is something to look at and then also the rear bumper support, um, which are really easy to look at. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you work with a good seller, you know, they should be willing to provide photos for that, so. And if those were rusty, is there any way to repair that or fix that? Yeah, I mean, that stuff can be welded. Um, you know, if your frame rails are rotted, that's a different story, but yeah. anything cross member related can be repaired. Okay. You know, either you pay somebody to do it or if you have the know-how, then, you know, it's not the end of the world. But buy a clean one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that would be the first step is to buy a clean one. So how'd you <laughs> land on the GX470 over something like a Land Cruiser or a 4Runner? Uh, these were, when I was looking, these were a little cheaper than Land Cruisers. Um, this is actually called a Land Cruiser Prado over in Europe. Right. We call it the Lexus, um, GX 470. So these were a little cheaper, um, uh, because not a lot of people know about them. Uh, the form is pretty, or the community's big now, but, um, it's kind of a sleeper off-road vehicle. And, um, I had a, a forerunner before, so a third gen forerunner. It was one of my first vehicles, and I really enjoyed it. And I've had a few pickups since then, but I kind of wanted to get back to an SUV. And, you know, I like the Toyota reliability, oh, yeah. and I thought that this was a pretty good-looking truck, you know, for what it was, and it was in my price range. And this is so, the V8, right? Yeah, so all of the GX470s come with a V8. It's a 4.7-liter V8. Um, it's similar to the, the V8 that they put in the Tundra. And then also the uh, fourth gen four runners had the same motor. So yeah, cool. pretty cool, for, especially for an SUV. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, so let's walk through what you did to it. I guess we'll start on the outside. Yeah, so I guess, we'll, like I said, we'll start on the front here. The, so this truck has uh, sport headlights, which is, are a little bit different than the, uh, the factory headlights. They're a little bit darker. They have kind of a tint to them. Uh, that was done by the previous owner. Um, and then for the fog lights, I did a, uh, a tint overlay on the fog lights. I tried to get it to match the, the headlights a little bit. It didn't really turn out the way that I thought it was going to. It's definitely better than it was because those fog lights were like bright chrome. Yeah, it was kind of a weird color. I, um, it was almost like a green. Um, so I don't, mm. I'm not sure why they did that. And then I just stuck some Amazon... Uh, you know, yellow fog lights in there. Eventually I'll probably end up replacing those with a, a legitimate LED pod, but you know, for now it is what it is. And we'll take everything that he mentions here and we'll link it in the description if you're interested in yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then as far as the grill goes, this is still the OEM grill. Um, I would painted it just a gloss black. The only thing I did was just tape off the Lexus logo to keep it chrome because there are a bunch of chrome pieces on the truck, so uh, it doesn't look totally out of place. And you have your obligatory yeah. TRD <laughs> yeah. badge. So I can hang with the Tacoma boys. Yeah. <laughs> I like the black and white version. It looks better with this paint color. Yeah, I think it worked. Um, you know, the color schemes were kind of limited. Like I said, that's another Amazon thing. Um, yeah, I think there was like blue and red and stuff like that, but I kind of wanted something subdued. So. Yeah. So I see you didn't go super overboard with the lighting. What's your... Uh, theory on all that um i mean a lot of the driving that i do is mostly like city driving so 
you know, this truck is being built for kind of as like a weekend warrior. And honestly, for lighting, I don't think you need to go like super crazy with LED pods and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, the headlights are bright enough, I think, especially if you were to put LED bulbs in them. So for just like exterior lighting, I have these uh, Baja Squadron Pros and these are the combo beam. So they're a spot and a flood, which honestly I think is the best pattern, especially for just driving around on back roads and stuff like that. And these guys are mounted onto the Rago fabrication brackets. Um, you can buy them directly from Rago fabrication. They make a whole bunch of stuff for Toyotas and uh, GXs. And those just mount right to the, I believe they mount to the underside of the hood. I don't know, we'll go, we'll go in the engine bay later and we'll uh, take a look at that. But Hey, you wanna open that up now? Let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, so they mount right underneath the, the hood here. Okay. So. so they don't go in between the hood and the hinge, they go- Yeah, right on the outside. On the of bottom it. side of the hinge. Yeah. I guess that makes sense so your hood doesn't fit any different. Yep. Anything in here? Um, I have like the, the uh, cold air intake, which is like a boxed intake. Have you noticed any benefits from that? Uh, it definitely has a little bit more um, juice on the pedal. You know, you get a better pedal feel. As far as the MPG response or the MPG, you know, benefits, I can't really say. It's been kind of, yeah, it's, it's been almost null. There's maybe a little increase, but nothing that's gonna like blow your socks off, so. When's the last time you did the timing chain? Uh, so, yeah, like Pat was saying, on these trucks, they have a, a timing belt. And every 90,000 miles, you're supposed to replace that timing belt. Um, me and Pat actually just replaced this one last winter. So hopefully we'll be good for another 80,000 miles or 90,000 miles. Um, so yeah, the, as far as the service goes, you know, that was done recently on this, we did the timing belt. Uh, we did the water pump. We did a new radiator. Another problem on these trucks is sometimes the radiators will leak. It's a fairly common issue mm -hmm. on the older ones, especially when you get into the 150, 170 K. So I know a big reason that people will steer away from V8 Toyotas is because of that timing belt. Yeah. Would you say that that's something that an average home mechanic should not do or would feel okay attempting? It depends. I mean, if you're confident in your skills, you know, if you have a basic mechanic knowledge, you could probably get away with it. You know, it's not, it's not super difficult. Um, you know, I don't claim to be a mechanic by any means, but you know, I have tools and work on things. So, you know, the biggest thing I would say is take your time with it. Yeah. I mean, that's slow. just with anything. Um, you make sure everything's labeled when you're taking things apart. You know, like when we were doing it, we had little cups and we labeled all the bolts and stuff like that. So we knew where stuff went and it wasn't that bad. And, and there's everything a, went okay, it started up? Yeah, that's the, that's the scariest part, nice. starting it. <laughs> and you probably saved two grand doing it yourself. Well, that's the thing, yeah. If you paid a shop, it would be almost 2,000 bucks to get it done, so. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's talk about your roof. What's going on up there? So the roof, I ended up adding the Prinsu um, roof rack, which um, there's a whole bunch of different overland quote unquote roof racks that they make for this truck. I would say that Prinsu is probably one of the better ones. Uh, there's a couple of things that I liked about the Prinsu uh, opposed to other uh, manufacturers. One was, you know, you don't have to cut anything on the roof. All you have to do is take your factory roof rack off and this will mount right at the factory positions. Um, the other thing I really liked about this was on their cross members, I don't know if you can get this Pat, but they have little cutouts so that when you actually go to mount stuff, you don't have to take the crossbars off. All you have to do is slide uh, your little mounting points into the cross members and then you're good to go. Um, the other thing that I liked about this was a lot of these roof racks that utilize these extruded aluminum bars, you have to use special little nuts to actually mount things. Because these have the recessed cutouts, you can use just a regular carriage bolt, you know, stainless carriage bolt, and it'll slide right in there. So mm -hmm. it'll be easier to mount stuff that way. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So what kind of case is that? So that is- Gotta mount those... something up there if you have a Prince rack. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so that is a Harbor Freight 
uh, I think you said earlier, Apache. Um, it's just like they're a long gun case. Yeah. And as far as what I have in there, I'll open it up quick. So I use this for like my straps and I think there's a blanket up here that I'll use for laying under the truck or, you know, I got some ropes in there, recovery stuff. So. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And it's just kind of a placeholder. I mean, this is probably where a lot of this stuff will live for now. And no um, water leaks in? No, no, it's been dry. Awesome. And, you know, I try to keep things up here that if it were to leak, that it wouldn't really matter too much. So, so that's what I'm keeping in there for now. Cool. And these are lockable too, if you do put something valuable up here. So are these real Max Tracks? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you have over too here? Too cheap for that. Uh, it's like an Amazon knockoff version of it. Um, again, like Pat said, we'll, we'll link it down below. I think I paid, I think there were like a hundred bucks for them. And then the mounting, like I said, you can use regular carriage bolts and stuff like that. So all the hardware was just hardware that I bought at Lowe's to mount them. Yeah, cool. So. The gray is a good color. Yeah, I think it works well with the color scheme of the truck. And uh, it's better than orange and it stands out a little bit more than the black. Yeah. A little something different than what you typically see on Instagram. Yeah, so. very cool. But you're actually considering going back to the factory roof rack, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I like the way that the Prinsu looks, but like I said, this is kind of like a uh, a city rig. So I don't know if I need all the uh, all the stuff up top, especially, yeah. you know, the truck has a bunch of room on the inside. So, you know, stuff can fit inside, but. And so we'll talk about those lights in the back in a second, but I'm yeah. just gonna show how you have the wire coming down. Oh yeah. Is this uh, a specific brand, wire, wire Shield? Yeah, so that's made by KC Lights. Um, so what that allows you to do is, you know, if you were to run a light bar up here or like what I have lights on the rear, you can get your wiring down and into your engine compartment by mm -hmm. the battery and it kind of cleans it up real nice. So. Yeah. And this just opens up, you know, it's just a little, nothing special. Yep. Just mounts onto the windshield and then you just route your wires that way. Yeah. Yeah, if I didn't know you had that, I probably wouldn't have noticed it. Yeah, it really does look like it's supposed to be there. You know, if yeah. you had one on either side, you would have no idea, so. Yeah, let's look at those lights. Yeah. So, again, we're working with some Amazon specials here. Uh, these were, I tinted them, this yellow um, fog. This is a, uh, a company called Laminex. They make a really good... Um, like headlight tint and everything like that so but if you look down here you can see I had to make like a custom wire harness to attach these two lights together and then I just ran it on the back side of this bar and basically just stuck it in this channel on the back side mm -hmm. and then ran it down the length of the rack right so and I can turn those on for you and you said these are from Amazon yeah I think they were like 30 bucks on Amazon um, yeah, so they give you the effect of Baja lights, yeah. Baja design lights. But, well, the uh, thing that I like about them is because they're not a name brand light, they're not super bright. Yeah. And I think what I would use them for is like setting up a campsite or, you know, if you need a work light back here. I don't want something super bright that's going to blind you, but you also want something that's going to be bright enough where you can see what you're doing. Sure. So, you know, without breaking the bank, I think those do a great job. Yeah. I think the last thing on the outside is your tires. You got some nice tires. Yeah, actually I just got these put on the other day. So these were uh, takeoffs from a Jeep. Um, this is actually a common size. And I actually, I think they come factory on the, the Jeep Rubicons. Mm -hmm. So this is a 255, 75, 17. So it's a little skinnier than the uh, factory tire, but it's about two inches taller. So it fills the wheel wells, I think really nice. And then you get that uh, aggressive sidewall too. And these, so on my truck, I have a set of spacers. So it brings the wheels out a little bit further and it kind of gives it a nice flush overall look. And plus that spacer allows for the tire to have a little bit more movement inside the wheel well. Cause without them and these size tires, you might actually rub on the upper control arm. So uh, what size is that spacer? It's a 1.25 inch. So those spacers have their own uh, lug nut yeah so you put the spacer on and then it comes with a set of lugs and then you put the your tire back on and with your your oem lugs okay so. any issues with balancing with those no 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 okay. um 
they're hub centric, which is what you want for Toyotas and Lexuses. Um, so as long as you buy, you know, this specific brand, these Spider Tracks ones are probably the best ones that you can buy for, yeah. you know, Toyotas. Um, so well, the tires look great. I know they're very popular. I actually run these on my truck too. Yeah. And they're yeah. not too loud on the highway, which is nice. No, it's it's great. Like you said, they're a nice. They look like a nice aggressive tire, but they're super quiet and they ride super nice. So, yeah, I had them on a, a previous truck too. So, yeah. all right. So, like Pat said, we'll move into the inside of the truck now. So the first thing you'll see is big red piece of wood hanging off the rear of it. So this is actually a table that I built. Um, like I was saying earlier, this is kind of a weekend warrior slash my daily. Um, so I wanted to set it up for camping. And one of the things that I knew that I wanted to do was build one of these rear tables um, in the form. A lot of people, you can buy them and stuff like that. But I think this is kind of the cheapest route to go. Plus, I, I like the wood look, especially with the wood on the interior of the truck. Um, I think this kind of looks the best or is the most cohesive. Um, so it's held up with these little rubber uh, grabbers here. And then it folds down. You have a couple of piano hinges here, which get screwed into the door. And on the back side, uh, there's little nuts. So anything you see that's screwed into the door has either a backing plate on the rear of it or has a, a nut and a washer. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, you just basically cut the wood and then um, you have to have some type of way to hold it up. Obviously, these are this is some paracord that I bought. Did you make those? Yeah, so these are made. This is called a, a snake knot. Mm -hmm. And actually with the is there any benefit to this over just like a single piece of paracord um i mean it's a little bit stronger you know not by much plus it kind of looks a little cool um the one thing i don't like about these is they're pretty thick so when you go to actually fold the table up you can see you know it kind of interferes with it going against the door all the way so i thought that i had was this is a, a pretty thick cord i think it's a a 550 cord or a, a, one, a one, I think it's a one, 100 cord or something like that. It's not your typical like skinny pair cord that you see made out of bracelets and stuff like that. So I think if I just got a skinnier cord, it would lay better against the door. But with these rubber hinges, it allows for a little bit of movement. So it's pretty cool. Like I said, this is basically gonna be a cook surface or you can put a, a camping stove on it or just use it for whatever, so. Uh, moving around the door, this here, um, the problem on the GXs is, is this rear handle here will break off. And obviously when I took this rear door panel off, the door handle broke. So this is made by uh, Ohana Rig Supply. They make a bunch of stuff for GXs. Um, it's a, a small business, so um, we'll link their website down below. Super cool guys. Um, like I said, um, local business, this is like a powder coated metal and then a little paracord wrap there. Yeah, it looks cool. They could do all sorts of different colors and stuff like that, but I went with the gray to try to match the truck. What's with this light up here? So this I did in kind of corp or in conjunction with the table. Um, because the rear light on the truck is kind of bad, the rear cargo light, I wanted to add another light. So, you know, as opposed to those uh, lights we looked at the roof earlier, this is a little bit more subdue. It's kind of like just an overhead cooking light or you know, if you need to go into the back for something, you know, it kind of points out and away from the tailgate, which is nice mm -hmm. and not really in your face. And then this little switch here, again, when I had the door panel off, I did all the wiring for this and just ran it through this little loom up in here and then stuck it into that rear. So it grabs power off of this factory light? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, nothing special cool. and it's not a super... It doesn't draw a bunch of power, so you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And it's on a switch, so you can turn it on and off. And then the last thing I did once I had the door panel off was, this is called the Let Me Out mod. <laughs> so this allows you to actually open the door from the inside of the truck. Um, Cause like I said, this is gonna be set up as like a mobile campsite for me and my girlfriend. So on these trucks, they had no way of actually exiting the rear door from the inside. So what this does is it actually goes down into the, the handle mechanism on the back side of the door, just uses a piece of wire and you basically just drill a hole into the low mechanism and then you're able to pull up on this and it releases the latch and then you're able to push it out. Yeah, cool. So, pretty cool. 
I think newer vehicles are required to have that by law. But yeah. I guess this one's old enough. Where it yeah, and I wasn't sure if that was a car thing because a car versus SUV thing. So mm, I don't know. That could be. But like I said, I plan on sleeping in the back of this, so I want to be able to get out from this from this way. Yeah. Instead of having to go to the very nice the rear doors. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then moving inside, um, we have a couple more things on the inside here. This little net here is uh, just like a net that I bought on Amazon. Uh, right now I have my pair of shoes up there and a couple of little things. But my idea with this is, you know, when I do go camping, to put sleeping bags and pillows and that kind of stuff up there so they're kind of out of the way of your more hard items that would be in the trunk. And, and then they wouldn't get wet or dirty either. Yeah, exactly. If you have muddy boots back here. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's very cool. And the... Uh, is this just a generic net or is it made for the vehicle? Well, it's not made for this truck, but it's made for cars. So it attaches onto the grab handles. Um, and then there's a... You can adjust them. You know, there's little straps that you can pull on. So... Yeah. And it has a little zipper pocket on the front here. So if you want to put a little something in there. And then there's some webbing, you know, on the underside of the net as well. So if you want to attach little things or, you know, what, whatever you want to do with it. It's pretty versatile, which is kind of cool, so. Yeah, very cool. And Anything then that, else back here? Um, not really, I mean, I got my tools and stuff like that, but you know, nothing. I know you have plans of making the bed platform, but uh, that'll be a separate video. Yeah, um, like I said, this is gonna end up being my camping, mobile camping site, you know, that's kind of the buzzword. But it's basically gonna be a platform that comes up to about here, and then when you fold the rear seats down, you know, you'll be able to sleep on top of it, so. Mm -hmm. It'll be pretty cool, but yeah, we can always do another video about that. Cool. Um, that's kind of in the works right now, so. Anything up front on the interior? Yeah, so we'll move to the front of the truck. So up front we have, um, I guess the most obvious is this phone mount. GX is an old vehicle, so there isn't really a good place to put a phone or anything like that. So I decided to use some epoxy and kind of stick it onto this trim piece here. It's not the most pretty in the world, but um, as far as holding the phone in the position that I like to have it, I think it's a great spot. And uh, it's pretty sturdy too. Um, like I said, it's epoxyed on the back here and then also right here. So. And this is a, I never know how to pronounce this, Skosh mount? Skosh, yeah. yeah. So it's just like their basic mount uh, with the little magnet on the back. Um, and with the theme of the vehicle being old, the, you know, it has a, the GX has a tape player, but there's no Bluetooth option. Mm -hmm. So if you look down here, I bought a little Bluetooth adapter on Amazon, and this actually plugs into the uh, auxiliary input and then it allows you to use Bluetooth through the auxiliary input of the truck. Yeah, cool. Which is super nice, you know. Good workaround. I don't have any tapes, so. And then you can <laughs> keep the factory screen, which yeah. a lot of people don't like to do, but I'm a fan of just keeping everything as OEM as possible. Yeah, there's a lot of um, like options to replace the screens and stuff like that, but you know, they're super buggy or they don't work very well, so that's kind of the best option that I've found. And like Pat says, I kind of like to keep things the way they were. I think that looks the best. So, um, and then the other thing that we have here is the aux beam. Uh, I think it's the eight gang light controller. So this is how I control all the exterior lights on the truck is they're all ran to this panel here. So the windshield lights are for the uh, Baja design lights up front. And then I have my rear lights, which are here. Unless you have the wire going down into this boot. Yep. That doesn't interfere with the uh, the shifter or anything? No. Um, when we did this, we made, you know, we kind of tore this whole panel up and made a decision about what would be the least intrusive area to go through. Right. Uh, we figured it'd be cheaper to replace this boot if we yeah. wanted to remove this panel yeah. than to actually drill a hole in the panel itself. Yeah. And the actuator and everything like this, you know, it, it, it doesn't interfere with it. So. Okay. Um, yeah, it's great. And this is super nice because, you know, it's not just for lights if you want to run, you know, other stuff too. There's a, um, 
a, a base station, if that's what you want to call it, underneath the hood where you can run all your wires to. Yeah. And each of those has a corresponding, um, you know, fuse and you can put different amp fuses in it for whatever you end up putting on. So um, we'll show that quick, but my guess is that most people viewing this video are gonna be pretty aware of what a Switch Pros is. Yeah. This is just a, a cheaper version of a Switch Pros. Yeah. Less than half the price. We'll link it. Yeah, I think for this one, it was like, I wanna say it was like 180 bucks for that. Yeah. Which, you know, for the type of stuff that I do is like perfect. You know, yeah. I don't need to spend $700 on a Switch Bank. And it works as well. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's uh I see you got your patches too. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a whole bunch of patches up here. Gotta have your patch collection. Yes, uh, some of them I had in previous vehicles and then you know I've been to you know various antique shops. I've gotten some of antique shops, some at fairs. Um you know, some I got this one when I was in Boy Scouts. And do know. these just stick to the headliner? Yeah, so all of these um, have a, a Velcro backing on them. So because the headliner is like this, it's like a carpet material, super soft. Yep. Anything Velcro will stick right to it. So, cool. Yep. Very nice. All right, well, thanks so much for walking us through it, Carter. I can see you really did a lot to it. Yeah, um, you know, I've only owned it for about a year now, but I've really enjoyed, you know, owning the truck and playing around with it. So. You know, if you're on the fence about it or if you're looking for kind of a mid-size SUV that's kind of in the uh, Toyota realm but doesn't necessarily have the Toyota tax to it, it's definitely one I would recommend. So Yeah, great point. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like this, please let me know because I can do more vehicle overviews, less of them. It's all up to you guys. Just let me know. Thanks for watching. See you next time.